Are you a self-published author? Are you looking to promote your book? We are looking for you. I personally know how hard it is to write a book as I always seem to be writing one but never finishing it. Get the word out to listeners in 42 countries and growing about your literary masterpiece. Go to bookinterrupted.com slash sponsorship for more information. Parental guidance is recommended because this episode has mature topics and strong language. Here are some moments you can look forward to during this episode of Book Interrupted. (laughs) Can you send this to Oprah for me? Poor empathy guy. I was able to manifest uh, two incredible things to come into my life as a result of your reading. I seriously can't believe it. I have a shirt. Crocodile is going to be a crocodile, even if they're a tame one. One giant minor chord oh, that gross. makes you, oh, I love it. <laughs> That's just a minute. I didn't Kim even do totally that. Kim has totally a major chord. <laughs> I don't know maybe. what happened to my impulse control. My body has Disrupted. Mind, body, and soul. Inspiration is the uh, And we're gonna talk it uh, out on Book Interrupted. Welcome to Book Interrupted, a book club for busy people to connect and one that celebrates life's interruptions. If you'd like to join along, this book cycle is from February 14th to April 3rd. It's Sarah's book pick, and we're reading Talking to Strangers by Malcolm Gladwell. Something is very wrong, Gladwell argues, with the tools and strategies we use to make sense of the people we don't know. And because we don't know how to talk to strangers, we are inviting conflict and misunderstanding in ways that have profound effect on our lives and our world. Let's listen in to this episode's group discussion. Welcome to the Talking to Strangers fan episode. Begin. (laughs) <laughs> this Wonderful. is the episode Thank where we you. find out what the fans thought. There you go. There we are. Okay. Thank you. All right. So I thought we'd start with Gwiggy. We sent him our Stumble Forward t shirt. We sent him because uh-huh. he was a fan. He did an Instagram post with his Stumble Forward t shirt. And it was a long post, but I'll just read some little things that he put. This is a light bulb moment during my time on book interrupted podcast when we were discussing white fragility by Robin D'Angelo so much so that the book interrupted team has released a squiggy line of merchandise featuring stumble forward the stumbles represents color of race there was a great discussion on how to represent white people in this design while they aren't oppressed they are the key to fixing the problem. So in a call-in instead of a call-out mindset, they had to be incorporated into the design. The design itself went through a stumble forward phase in itself. On top of the wicked design, a portion of the profits will be donated to PEC, local BIPOC, people of color organization. At all welcome here. And then he says more stuff because it's a long post. And then he just says, thank you, Book Interrupted. I feel honored that my words have had such an effect. I seriously can't believe it. I have a shirt. And he said, because first I chose to learn, then I chose to share, and you chose to listen. And here we are. Oh, that's nice, right? That's so that's nice of great. Him to say, right? That's awesome. And it's such a fantastic I shirt. I haven't I got one yet. I got to get one because it's just cool. It's just it a is cool, cool shirt. It's a really cool shirt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. good one so thank you leah for making and squeaky share. Mm-hmm. and squeaky and all of for... you stumblers <laughs> yeah so what else do we have here oh meredith's mullet interruption <laughs> you've gotten a comment on that someone wrote on your mullet interruption welcome you sport it well so they must have one too <laughs> welcome to the mullet club is that what they're welcoming yeah, you yeah. to so awesome <laughs> you do sport it well it's fun. I love your it's, mullet. Really, it's like kind of a really fun haircut. I like it. It yeah. really suits you. Like to the point that I'm like, how did you not have this sooner in your life? Yeah. yeah. You found your haircut. You know what I think is also is that like my husband said, like, what's the worst that can happen? You look great with a shaved head. And I was like, oh, thanks. So it kind of gives me permission to do pretty much anything with my hair. 
because he's like you look good no matter what so I was like yeah let's go for it and yes I do it. look good no matter what thanks he's for reminding husband. me <laughs> he's nice <laughs> he's my husband <laughs> he likes me that's good so I think it's a pre- usually a prerequisite mm-hmm. <laughs> So this was interesting. So we had a lot of activity on Twitter this last book cycle. And I'm just highlighting all the new people I've never seen before. Because oftentimes you get a lot of the same people reposting and sharing on the different platforms that they use. And we had so many new people this time around, which was really nice. I thought this is really interesting. One person really liked our uh, nonviolent communication playlist blog about the songs we picked, so they liked it. But what I thought was really exciting, maybe it's just me, it's like Kim's manifested this opportunity maybe. He is called Mindful Empathy and he's called Tony the Empathy Guy Struggs. His (laughs) picture on Twitter is him with Oprah. Oh, no. Yeah. No, I'm not joking. I sent it to all you guys. Yeah, if you go to Mindful Empathy, Tony, the empathy guy, Struggs, you'll see a picture of him with Oprah. And he really liked our nonviolent communication playlist blog. Yeah, there you go, Kim. You are baiting Oprah. It's working. That's right. You might be Oprah's best friend. Yeah. Now we're only three degrees of separation away. <laughs> totally. You're really baiting Keep her. Keep on clawing ourselves closer to Oprah. <laughs> Well, I don't know. Do you guys know this that I did? I have it's embarrassing now because I had a mission that I completely embarrassingly did not accomplish. But I was really inspired because of Super Soul Sundays with Oprah. And so and I had never been on Twitter. So I was like, okay, I'm going to make my like Twitter premiere and I'm going to talk to Oprah. I'm going to send Oprah a message every single day for a whole year. And hopefully she'll, that someone will see it and be like, who's this girl that always talks to you, Oprah? And my very first message, which I still think was really good, was, are you there, Oprah? It's me, Kimberly. Like, are you there? God, it's me, Margaret. Yeah. I thought that was funny. And then I did it for like, I don't know, not even a week. <laughs> I was like, I don't even understand how Twitter works. Is anyone seeing this? Like, I don't even know. So then I just quit. So <laughs> that oh. avenue is not working. But ever since then, I've been passively baiting her. really passively (laughs) just like thinking about her yeah 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 telepathy yeah can you hear my thoughts really i've just been thinking about her before i go to sleep every night (laughs) yeah (laughs) well maybe the empathy guy can help you yeah maybe (laughs) maybe Oh, or that's help Oprah start following him. Away. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe start following him and send your Oprah messages to him. Can you send this to Oprah for me? Poor empathy guy. <laughs> no. I don't want to use him. No. It's very nice no. of him. That is like nice. Playlist. Him. It was a good yeah. playlist. I like all our playlists. I, I often put them on. Ew. It's one I'm of my on yeah. book interrupted stuff or I mean. I, I put on the, the playlist for the book that I'm writing about. Oh. That or Radiohead. Oh, the Talking to Strangers playlist, I really like. I listen to it a lot of times. Oh, when it's working. good. If I don't have to do editing. It's really good, that one. Some of the songs that we put in, like, I looked for things with Strangers and stuff, and I didn't hit hardly any of the ones. Like, Mare's Doors, People Are Strange. I was like, I forgot about the doors. I everyone was going to put that on. I always think that about all the songs I pick. I think it was on my longer list to include. Yeah. Um, yeah I had that kid's true. song, the Sharon Lowe's and Bram. Um, I know. Uh, I love it. The Smile on the Crocodile. And the story yeah. behind that is that we listened to this song and my kid's like, what is this song about? And we would listen to it on repeat while we're driving somewhere like, the whole time. It's not a long song, like 20 times on the way to wherever. And they want to dissect the song, what it means and stuff. I'm like, the crocodile convinced everybody that it wasn't going to eat the lady. Anyway, it was during the reading this book that I was playing and playing and playing the song. I was like, oh, this should probably go on the playlist because <laughs> this children's song is teaching my children that like, you can't necessarily believe the stranger because a crocodile is going to be a crocodile, even if they're a tame one. Or pretending to be. Anyway. I thought it was, I thought it was perfect, Meredith. Yeah. And I love our playlist. We just have, like, we're really good at putting together amazing playlists. Did you say so yourself? <laughs> yeah. It's just really fun to, like, fun. think of songs that fit a theme and then see how they all come together. It's just so gratifying, I guess. Yeah. When we do it each time. It never loses its luster for me. It's nice mm-hmm. to get a new playlist every six weeks. 
I also totally. don't know how to work Spotify or maybe Spotify is making me feel that way because I won't pay for it. So like free Spotify is shitty. Cause I'm creating the list. So it's really easy for me to get to the playlist, but I have heard even from Leah, she's like, can you send me the link to that playlist again? I can't find it. Get it. Yeah. Cause sometimes when I search, it does not come up in the results. I always save it and like add it to my library or whatever. Like me that's too. not my issue. Just actually navigating Spotify. And making your own. Well, playlist. just being able to use it. Like you can only fast forward so many songs, mm. right? So if there's a song I don't want to listen to, like I have to be very particular because you run out, you get to like fast forward two songs that it's like, now you have to listen to everything. And I also don't know, there's this weird feature where like, if I want to change from what I'm listening to to something else, I'll like hit what I want to listen to and it'll play it for like seven seconds and then it rejoins the song I was formerly listening to. Like, I just, oh, I, I don't understand. That's because it's, you're on the free, yeah, you're version. Free right. That's they want to annoy me into paying for it. And really they're going to annoy me right off of it. <laughs> that's what's going to happen. <laughs> like they care. I I'm, make, it's not like I'm Neil Young or anything. <laughs> I don't even, I was like, I do have things on Spotify, actually. It's like, I don't have anything on Spotify, but I'm out of here. <laughs> Feel the impact. I, I also have it on Apple Music, too. Well, I don't use Apple Music either. Oh, okay. I used to have this playlist, not even a playlist. I don't know what you would call it. Music library that was mostly stolen. Sorry. That I, you know what I mean? Like back in the day with Napster and like LimeWire and all of that stuff. And I had like this amazing huge list and then I had it on my phone and I listened to that then the phone wouldn't work because it was too big you know like so whatever so that is what I want and I'll never have yeah. it again plus some of the stuff on that list was like added there by people I don't even know what the songs are I love them but I don't know who sang it or what it's called like I can never get it back and anyway so that's why nothing's good enough yeah I just like to buy and download to my computer and then put it on a like I still have my old iPod or we have a USB stick that I put on and put it in the car, but I just want to buy the stuff. I used to buy it on Google play all the time and then I'd have the MP3 and I could listen to it anywhere I want, but now everything's going to, they want you to get subscriptions as streaming. All streaming, right? On the platform. It makes it harder. So I did actually start using Apple music because I have an iPhone now and I just want to buy some of my music so I can do it wherever. I think I did a trial on Apple music yeah. and I do like that it algorithms you and it's like, you probably like this. You probably like that. I, I think that's potentially gonna be okay so it's funny that you guys are talking about this because someone we know here asked if we could they gave us a usb and they have like a radio you can put into the usb to listen to music on the radio and they asked if we could put bob marley on for them like from our computer so my husband brought it, he's like can we put some bob marley on this for th this friend of ours and i was like i don't actually know and i tried after i said to my husband i'm like i can't i don't i can't figure out how to get it i can't i can download it i have an apple music now i have all essentials of bob marley but i can't take those and put it on the usb you can't you have to do it old school style like we used to you'd find the latest site that you could do the illegal streaming to get your mp3 and it has to be saved outside of iTunes or Spotify. It's so hard. Isn't it? It's just so complicated. It is. Like, I don't want to rip off artists either. Yes. You know, I just but like. Pay. I just want to pay and then be able to play it on wherever. Like, yes. You know, yes. Like, yeah. I don't mind paying for it. I just, that's the thing. I went on all these sites and like one site was like, my computer like shot out, like someone's trying to compromise. And I was like, oh my God, like, it's like, you can't. I was like, I don't, I'm not savvy enough to know what sites are like scam sites that are gonna like steal all my information because I'm trying to download <laughs> some Barb Marley. So eventually I just give it back to my husband and he found someone that knew where you Good. could do that. Oh, that's but nice. that's what I said to him, I miss LimeWire and I miss Napster. I know no. that they were not Bad. great. Like I know they are stealing, but. I miss just the ease of being like, I like this song and I want it forever. I just, I still have CDs. I have a CD player. That's what I do. I play all my CDs. Like I play CDs. And that's another thing. You don't even have a CD-ROM. Like in the olden days, you could put your CD mm. in your computer and, burn and then it. put it on oh, yeah. and burn it onto the stick. You can't even mm -hmm. do it anymore because no computers have CD-ROMs anymore. Like, <laughs> Thank goodness, really though. <laughs> those, things, those things were just waiting to break.
It's true. And they're always scratched. And you're remember, like, yeah, I remember when they would the open first, half the time. Remember the first shift from the Walkman to the Discman? And it's like, and it was like such a big deal. But then you found yourself, you'd have to hold yeah, you can't the jog. Discman like this because if it moves on any level, you're going to like skip <laughs> your song. It was ridiculous. Yeah. So funny. I know. Should we uh, oh. talk about talking to strangers a little bit? I mean, I guess we were stealing from strangers, but let's get back yeah. on topic. Just to um, bring us back online a little bit. So another new person liked our International Women's Day posts and, which I thought was a good announcement, our new fan book member, Virginia, who's going to be joining us for Midnight Library also mentioned to all of us how much she liked our international women's day post oh, day. Nice. you did so well with it sarah it was good right yeah i can't that's believe good. we did it we really did it last minute though we pulled it off. <laughs> oh it was like crash and panic because i had even the day before i was like oh my gosh it's tomorrow and then i was like fudge i don't have the time to chase so i made up like a backup plan and then you just jumped into action sarah you're like don't worry we can do this we said we'd do this and i was like okay okay we can do this it was amazing and then you guys all jumped in you were just like i'm on it and you sent in the pictures and it was awesome i think it's like a microcosm of how awesome women are the fact that we like pulled it off with zero time you know what i mean we were just like bam and got it done kind of thing even though we could have also been like, it's impossible to complete now. The time yeah. has run out or whatever, yeah. but we didn't do that. At yeah. all. You guys did the opposite and it was really, I don't know. It impacted me definitely positively. I don't know how. I just remember being like, that's my girls. I just remember feeling like supported. Huh, we can do things, you know? <laughs> like I liked us being part yeah. of the message. So I was glad that we kind of pulled it together. And for me too, Kara, because you mentioned it like a month ago to everyone. Amazingly. I and then remember. like life happens. Totally. And my daughter came home to say, oh, it's Women's Day tomorrow. And these are the things we're doing. I was like, oh, oh no. I'm so Oh my God. <laughs> we're doing something. We were. So, I like that yeah, your so oldest was doing something about International Women's Day. That's awesome. Yeah, at their school, they did a, something where they had like a female soccer player and woman in politics. So they brought all these different women that maybe would be considered in traditional male roles and came and talked to all the kids at the school about nice. how women can do whatever. Any, Break the yeah, bias. Yeah, 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 breaking the bias. So that's what they did. They did something that was breaking the bias. So that was really good. Yeah, and I want to talk about how our next book will be The Midnight Library, that we've chosen a fan named Virginia, and we'll be reading The Midnight Library with her after The Robin. Yeah, the Robin once we wrap the Robin. first, and then it'll be Midnight Library. I'm excited about it. Mm -hmm. it, was on my, uh, it was on my radar. The fan episodes are always so fun, right? Like, I just love having another person on here, and it just... It's exciting. She seems fun. Yeah. It's like a refreshing dynamic. I agree. I haven't got the book yet. Mine is coming soon. I haven't either. I'm planning on getting it on Tuesday. I would highly suggest that you put it off. It's taken over my life. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Me too. Yeah, I know. Doesn't it feel good? Yeah. Like I do enjoy that kind of book. Yeah. I know. It's so good. I mean, it might not be your guy's cup of tea, but I'm the sort of person that like... Even in music, there's something beautiful if someone plays like a minor chord, you know, like it's like sad, but there's like beauty in that. I like love that. And to me, like the Midnight Library is like one giant minor chord oh, that gross. makes you. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Let's just admit it. I didn't Kim even do totally that. Kim has totally amazing chords. I don't know what maybe. happened to my impulse control. No, I love that you're sharing how you really feel. I was like, wow. Kim has totally a major chord lady, you know? Yeah, I just, I, I love, love the, like, it's going, Gross. like, down, but it does a reframe. Just re-examining what is a regret. I didn't mean to say gross. That is a regret. I think it was freaking hilarious. Maybe you'll like this book then. <laughs> I meant to say great, but I still, the, the message was still the same that I'm, gross. I'm like cautious now. But gross, I thought was just too extreme. So I just want to clarify <laughs> that because it came right out of my mouth and it was a surprise to me. 
Like, I was like, gross. No, shut up. That's what I'm trying to say. Your mouth is like, I like to sing major chords. Gross. <laughs> totally. Minors totally. are not my favorite. Oh, yeah, sorry. it was so hilarious. It's such a, but because you're a musical person, that's why it's so awesome that your mouth just did that. Your brain was like, she can try to say anything she wants, but I know how she feels. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the mouth is like, I'm taking over here. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you. Oh, that was so good. That was <laughs> great. This interruption is brought to you by Unpublished. Do you want to know more about the members and Book Interrupted? Go behind the scenes? Visit our website at www.bookinterrupted.com. Book Interrupted. Okay, my audio interruption, this is Leah, is, can you hear that? Listen. Maybe you can't hear that. That is hail. Hail. It's 9.30 in the morning on March, I don't know, March 23rd maybe? It should be spring. I'm never going to be able to complete this challenge, y'all. I'm making excuses. I'm putting my foot down and I'm making excuses. I can't, com- I can't commit to this bird listening challenge because I will not sit in hail. And that's that. (laughs) We should have read this book in May or June. It should have been a summer read. That's no one's fault. I'm not pointing fingers of blame. I'm just not doing the challenge of bird listening. I'm just a big weather baby. Good day. Book interrupted. We had a lot of likes and shares from Kim's tarot interruption oh yeah so Kim did yeah so when we did off the shelf our last off the shelf Kim did tarot card readings for all of us and then afterwards you just got so into it that you did two interruptions with the tarot card readings (laughs) so stop it after it was great (laughs) (laughs) so the video one is the one that got liked and shared a lot and someone called Tara Czar so like a tarot site on Twitter, they liked it. So there you go. Oh, I know. Wow. Um, I'm thinking back to that off the shelf, but I, I can't remember what my, I have to go back and remember what the card said because this past week was very challenging. I was like, oh, yeah. was this predicted? Yeah. In my yeah. tarot card reading? Good Should question. I have heeded the, like, the advice? It, it was legal. You got justice? justice? I did get justice. Mm-hmm. There you go. Justice. Hmm. Yeah, there you go. I'll, I'll have to think about that one. The yeah, verdict we, do, is in. Can we do a tarot after every off the shelf? Yeah, I'm I would totally fine you. with that. Yeah. That is no problem. Sweet. Yeah, let's if we do have it. time. If we're not like blah 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 blah. I mean, we always are, but you okay. know, yeah, we'll I know. need some time. <laughs> but we'll have to consciously not blah blah blah. Otherwise, it'll just have happen. like a tarot alarm. Hmm. Just, blah, 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 blah. We're like, oh, it's the tarot. <laughs> yeah. It's tarot time. Yeah, for tarot card yeah. The stars, <laughs> like literally stars, start like falling. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Great. Sarah's like, okay, this. I can get that sound. I Concepts like to how you put that time. on your checklist. Just mm-hmm. Okay, we'll do that. Check. Mm-hmm. Um, KJ, yeah, your a- uh, tarot reading for me was exactly what uh, I needed and provided me the space to start. So it was had ev- everything to do kind of with super busy right now, but I'm going to be coming up on a space. And is it okay now if I start to consider how I would like that space to be filled? And I swear to God, it's because of you. I'm not usually a strong manifester. I would say that I have very good luck, but I think it's because I know how to bring my emotions up to get things that I want. But anyways, I attribute it to you. I was able to manifest uh, two incredible things to come into my life as a result of your reading. Well, I also think you should attribute it to you. You're the manifester. (laughs) Just to give credit where credit's due. I'm glad I awoken maybe your awareness to the possibility, but you manned that yeah. fest, man. Yeah, you did. You <laughs> helped me start to bring intention mm. into the mix where I would have been doing like typical Kara style, like <gasps> potentially oh? unconscious. You know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and for the record, Kara's card was nine of wands. Yes. Thank you, Sarah. I love your. Did you just remember this all? No, she's just good with this stuff. Oh, yeah. 
I'm pretty You're good. Bad. You are. I still remember mine as well. I know you were not. Page of Pentacles. Page. Page of Pentacles. I only remember the ones that were disliked. Right? Like, I, I remember yours too. That's why I'm glad that you did the tarot card after because yeah. you told me about it. And I was like, okay. I'm okay now because you got the nine of pentacles. You're like, that's for Fine. me too. Which Take I it. do the whole time that I read tarot cards too. I'm like, that's also for me. That's for me yeah. too. I'll, I'll accept that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, universe, for giving that to me through Kim. <laughs> she was going to have to do a full reading for me now. Page of pentacles. <laughs> Dare you. Totally. Yeah, it's hard with one card. <clears throat> Because like, and when you have more cards, you have, you know, obviously more context. There's dynamics between them. Yeah. Yeah. So should we, should I say a little thing about Celestial Saturday real quick? Yeah. Great. There was ever a, like a perfect cue for the moment. Well, Here right. it is. So we're considering having it run on a Saturday, a brief little under 10 minute mini session with Leah who wanted to have more readings and all of you are welcome to potentially do a celestial Saturday as well, which is a more, you know, individually focused situation, but shorter. She just puts together uh, some stuff. I, I advise all of you to go do a sneak peek in our folder because the trailer is insanely amazing. And the actual product that we kind of have come up with as our you know pilot, like practice is pretty cool too. But to the listeners, if you're interested, check out where do we keep those things? Facebook or everywhere? They will be on our blog. So they can go to www.bookinterrupted.com slash blog on Saturdays. But, and they'll see them there. Right. Eventually. Eventually. <laughs> Not probably this Saturday. Yes. <laughs> Not this okay. I was like, when maybe. are we doing this? I mean, maybe that one, that first one's pretty good. It's just that there's not a second one ready to go in the, in the, what do you call it? The, the barrel, the holster. Right. I'm much more violent than that. Not a p- nice line. Uh, <laughs> in the cannon. No. In, the can- <laughs> in the shaft. Now I'm going gross. Sorry. Oh my gosh. Next no. topic. I'm sorry. Disgusting. I'm doing that to you. Gross. Is that what you said? Oh, gross. Gross. Yeah. 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 Oh, gross. gross. Oh, I was going to say gross. great. That was so <laughs> funny. I was going to say great. It's like gross. <laughs> So I did a Thought Thursday, one of my Sarah Sings, and we got a new person that liked that as well. I'm taking a master class with Joy Hardro. I think that's how you say her name, Hardro. She's a poet. She said something. It's not even anywhere online. She just said it in this master class, and it was so good that I bookmarked it and then made my husband listen to it and said it to other friends. And then I was like, I'm going to make it. This is my inspirational quote. And she said... Listening is the most crucial to writing poetry, to living a good life, to creating, to raising children. And I think these days it's hard, more and more difficult to find listening places. Even in this world where there is so much interference and so much noise, when you listen to silence, it's so full of everything. It's sort of like how white light is full of every color and yet it's white light. It's the same thing with silence. Silence is the white light of sound. Isn't Love that it. so awesome? I feel like that, that when you quiet yourself, it is that the last part is what gave me chills and I listened again mm-hmm. was silence is a white light of sound. It's like, yes, totally. It's so full of everything and you get so busy that when you finally stop and just listen. So she's in her master classes say you need to listen before you even start so she was trying to teach people how to actually quiet their minds so they can really listen because poetry is about your soul right so anyway it reminds me of the um glennon doyle get in the closet routine yeah right like the same kind of golden goo you Mm -hmm. need to get in the golden goo to write poetry yeah yeah and there's like i love the notion that she's bringing up that there is a fullness or a wholeness to silence because usually do you guys automatically when you think of silence is your first inclination to associate it with an emptiness Mm -hmm. or yeah and I like that yes whereas I like that she's yeah just that wholeness and it's almost implying that that wholeness is also you 
that if you're silencing like your monkey mind, you are inviting yourself to be more whole. And that's the white light because like yes. your soul is God or whatever, right? Like every, this is going to get really crazy deep and probably too fast for what I'm trying to say. Everything you need to know is already inside of you. Yes. So if you can get quiet enough and listen, like she describes, then you're in touch with the divine. I did it. You are because we're so (laughs) fractured within. Yeah. That's a great quote, Sarah. And the metaphor that white light is every color. It's a great metaphor because it makes you think, oh, right. Silence is full of everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I love it. And someone shared that a new person that's never done anything on our Twitter before. So I like that. Dina. You started this to connect. So that's what it's all about. (laughs) Uh, It's better than when your like mom likes it. You know, it's just different. (laughs) We have a mom like. I kept mom like in here somewhere. Where do I put my mom like? Of course she did. I just have the mom like. Oh, wonderful. We've got a mom like here. I posted just a book on our book club, our Facebook book club, not on our Facebook page, but the book club page. I posted one of these book saying things. And the book saying is, do you have a magic spell to return someone to life? She said, no, the witch said, I'm sorry. Oh, why don't you tell me about them? Will that bring them back for us for a little while? Stories are a different kind of magic. So I really like that. And a mom put, I love this, Sarah. <laughs> Not my mom. mom was that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who's I, you're gonna I be? recognize that written voice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'd like to share my 10 cents on that with who I think. <laughs> it is lovely though. We talk yeah, about a lot of that in our house that like even when someone's gone, they live on in your heart. And I think that's the point of stories, right? That's the great thing about family stories is that it does it keeps that person here mm-hmm. for a little while. Yeah. yeah. I struggle to find like my kids always want to hear stories about my life as a kid. I'm always trying to think of something really interesting, but it doesn't even have to be interesting. Like just be like. I really had, I had this belt that I loved and it looked like this. And they're like, really, really? Yeah. Like they just want even the <laughs> most so minor cute. things. They Mine want wants know. really detailed things. He's like, can you tell me about a time when you fell off a bike or a scooter? <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> yes. Do you know what a maxi pad is? <laughs> <laughs> Please refer to other episodes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is that an off the shelf conversation we were having? The maxi pad? It was the embarrassing yeah, things. Was. Yeah. 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 It was off the shelf. It was the tarot one. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. our previous. What oh happened to you? <laughs> yeah, my kids ask me lots of stories about different things and different people, like my friends. They ask me about my friends when I was a kid. They want to know. Yeah, I think it makes us more yeah. human, right? Because as a parent, you're like a parent, right? And so to hear about these little stories where you do things that aren't parenty, that's why they're interesting. Fascinating for sure. I remember growing up, my dad was a prospector before he went on to university. And Wait a minute, sh- like a gold digger? Yeah, like he walked. Oh yeah, like he would go around <laughs> all of North America, uncharted place, and he would find like, where different minerals were and do maps for areas that weren't cool. What is it? Topography like, or whatever? I like to picture him with like a pickaxe or something over his shoulder. I know. Absolutely. Absolutely. But yeah, like, like, yeah. Oh, total Tilly hat. But yeah, so he grew up in BC, which didn't have a grade 13. It just had grade 12. I think he failed it like three times with received the message that he was stupid a lot growing up. Turns out he was just allergic to milk and it slowed down his brain. <laughs> but he discovered that when he was a prospector because he didn't have any milk products and his mom would always give him like cream, not just milk. And he was like, and I had clarity of thought for the first time in my life. <laughs> like the fog lifted. But yeah, so he just (laughs) believed he was stupid, finally graduated, I think after the third time, his girlfriend at the time, her father was a businessman and my dad really looked up to him. And so he kind of took my dad on as like a mentor and helped him talk like business talk and stuff like that. And my dad really liked it, but he was like, still, I don't know if 
university or business is for me. So he decided he'd go out and make money as a prospector. And within like not even, I think a year, he had risen through the ranks and was senior guy giving orders to men that are like 40, 50 years old and he's 20. And so then he was like, maybe I'm not stupid. And that's how he went on to like go to university. But anyways, he has a crap load of the most fascinating stories going all over Canada and the United States. But he would always give them titles like the place where the sun never set or the land that didn't I'm stop forgot. raining. Yeah. And so Leah and I'd be like, uh-huh, uh-huh, tell us again. Because yeah, it was really cool hearing about your father as a person, Mm -hmm. he did stuff like that. Like he went on thick ice across a lake in a tank that started to crack and he had to figure out how to get the crew out and how to like shuffle. Yeah. It was like exhilarating. I don't Mm -hmm. know if it's fitting or ironic, but that story was full of gold. Like there's so much gold in that story. (laughs) Success. Like the milk part. Like (laughs) <laughs> but I know. And then not only is it milk, but she like feeds him like whipping cream. Like so so literally, <laughs> she would give him cream, sugar, and some type of oats, like not normal, oats, some type of porridge thing. And it was, oh no, and it was brown sugar. And he would get in trouble if he didn't consume all of it. And then he That's goes off of the and he was like, he was like, I can think. <laughs> It's funny when I was younger, I was also lactose intolerant, but we didn't know. Yeah. And I remember in high school, it was because I I had such bad acne and I went to, my mom eventually sent me to a spa. She was like trying to help me. I was 15 or 16 or something and had really bad acne. And there happened to be a woman who did Chinese medicine at the spa and she was only there one day a week and she walked past me and she's like, you can't have dairy. (laughs) We were like, what? And then my mom asked if we could get an appointment with her and yeah she was like you have an allergy to dairy and it turns out I was lactose intolerant when I stopped having dairy because I like worked at a bakery and I like drank only milk because that's the healthiest thing for you and you know I was all about health that's so you yeah like a lot of milk like a liter a day like it was just ridiculous yeah right, I drank a lot of milk uh, because it's healthy right yeah when I stopped having dairy I remember being like oh I thought the pain I got from digesting food was the feeling you got from digesting food. I didn't realize no one else feels pain while they're digesting. That's not normal. (laughs) That's not the normal digestion feeling. That's just me being lactose intolerant, not being able to actually like the bloating and all that. (laughs) Remember I'd be like, I'm a food baby. I was just uncomfortable. Yeah. For like 16 years. And I was like, oh. Yeah, like most of your life. (laughs) You know. No biggie. (laughs) And you want to hear something actually really interesting? When I was pregnant with my first child, while I was pregnant, I started craving dairy, but I couldn't have dairy. And then I tried some ice cream. I was like, I don't even care. I'm going to have ice cream. I'll just like be sick later. I was craving it so badly. And then nothing. And I was like, oh my God. And then I realized during my pregnancy, I could have dairy. So I was eating so much dairy. And then after I gave birth, I went back to lactose intolerant. And then with my second child, it happened again. I could have dairy, but then it never went back. So I can have dairy now without bloating from being pregnant. Isn't that crazy? Is that just because of hormones, do you think? I have no idea. I don't know. But I love that. But now I have dairy all the time. Increases in lactobacillus. Like, doesn't lactobacillus... uh, Yeah, there's something that breaks it down. So you must have got a supply Hmm. of it somehow. A a, a lifetime Mm -hmm. supply, too. I think you get, like, a natural (laughs) increase in lactobacillus uh, when you're pregnant. Like, not in your gut, but, like, in your vaginal canal. I think... uh, That might be misquoting, but I I think something like that. It's like a vague memory from yeah yeah i love the sort of information that you retain and get drawn to meredith you just saying like in the vaginal canal maybe you were the one that taught me that when babies are born not by cesarean but when they go out through the vaginal canal that coats them what is it and it helps their gut health later in life Yes, you're seeding their microbiome. And I was yeah. like, I was like, mind blown. Humans are incredible. Yeah. Yeah. 
feel like more and more like aliens every turn totally. like every time we look yeah cool okay what else next topic oh we had a new share of our which i i put on here because i was not surprised but uh, our episode six our last band episode did i put the podcast i linked the podcast and someone shared it that was new that called essence earth that one's about ikea furniture britney spears uncle buck that one's about ikea furniture britney spears uncle buck the dangers of eating magnets dog earring pages of books pride and prejudice and merkins and they were like (laughs) yes that was a roller coaster ride they loved it. <laughs> You're just like, we don't know what you guys are talking about here. It's something for everybody, really. <laughs> That's how we got them. <laughs> we really talk about Everything. different topics, don't we? <laughs> Nothing is off. Yeah. Oh, uh, during this book cycle, and this wasn't even on purpose, but I, I'm just finding it here. I listen to podcasts from time to time uh, called uh, Hidden Brain. Do you guys know what this mm, is? Yeah. Really good. They do, Sam Harris. They, they've got this series called Mind Reading 2.0. And this goes along with this talking to strangers book so well. There's a whole bunch of uh, episodes like, uh, why did you do that? You know, trying to figure out why we do things and why other people do things, uh, how others see you, the double standard. It's easy to spot bias in other people, but not in yourself. And anyway, there's like a whole five episodes, uh, why conversations go wrong. And it's kind of like looking like a little bit more uh, focused on all these things we talked about in talking to strangers. So if you like the book, you might really like the- Oh, yeah. I mean, we're not being paid by Hidden Brain, right? <laughs> I just really enjoyed it because I started listening to it. I was like, oh, this is totally like, I kind of wish I had listened to it while I was reading the book, like for part of our group conversations. So that might remind me of something. I listened to a podcast and it was a bonus episode on revisionist history, which is Malcolm Gladwell's podcast. Pod- 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 <laughs> podcast. 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 <laughs> It's a QU podcast podcast. <laughs> and um, <laughs> he was debating Adam Grant nice. just about a bunch of stuff. And just Wait, who's me... Adam Grant? I'm sorry. I'm terrible with names. Uh, he just came out with like, think again. I guess you could say he's like an organizational psychologist. That's right. Yeah, that's right. He and Gladwell, I think are really good friends, but they're often on opposite sides of an argument. I went and found that podcast because one thing that I thought was interesting, remember how I was saying like, there's something about this book. Like I'm not enjoying this chapter. I'm not enjoying that chapter. I feel like this and that. I heard that in that debate, Adam Grant kind of may have been giving me some fuel for my fire. So it's not in there. So I don't know if I miss, if I got the wrong thing or whatever, but here's a valid point talking to strangers is about how we like don't know anything but blink is about how we do right in one second so that was one of adam grant's points this didn't happen in that podcast so i don't know where it is but that's why what drew me to it because he was kind of being like what are you even talking about like you don't even know what you're talking about one minute you're saying we can figure things out in the blink of an eye the next thing you're saying like we don't know anything like what's your theory and I think Gladwell was like, I don't know. I just write like it, like the banter between them was really actually enjoyable. Like, it's funny. He gives advice. He's like, what's your best way to communicate at work? And Gladwell's like, I find passive aggressively is the, is the most. Uh, oh my gosh. I got to check this one out. Yeah, it's at the end. I think it's at the end of his season two. It was just this okay. bonus footage and then season three was coming. So that might be where it's located. But I guess if you just All search right. Adam Grant on revisionist history you'll well, find we'll have it. to put it in the uh show, show notes, notes, I think. Show notes. Yeah. friendly banter when done with like humility and humor is great isn't it yeah it's a really good it's live think that gladwell was on adam grant's anyway it's on his it's okay. i found it on revisionist history but it might have been grant like interviewing gladwell right mm. Next topic, Sarah. <laughs> okay. Let's be quick. There's only two left. That was your cue. I mean, one, <laughs> one was just somebody liked the Instagram post of me reading, talking to strangers. But another one was very personal. We did a reel of Meredith setting up for the podcast and someone, one of Meredith's bridesmaids, because I was a bridesmaid too. We got Meredith that lamp, that funky girl lamp for her wedding. The lady lamp. We call her the lady lamp. It's amazing. Yes. Yeah, so the one bridesmaid wrote on that, what a gorgeous lady lamp. <laughs> and then I put, I wonder where she got it. Yeah. And then you put best lamp ever came from some of the best too. Anyway. Oh, was- I, 
That's nice. I didn't remember writing nice. that. I have a memory. <laughs> Good like for me. You did well on social media. But, but yes. I think they are some of the best. I'm glad that I said something. <laughs> the best lamp too. And people come in, they're like, where did you get that lamp? Like, now, can you give us a kid? Yeah, yeah, let's see. Let me turn. She's standing beside She's me. She's not shy and <laughs> modest, is she? Like, look oh, at it. so great. Just I do that. I can't. Just just look at look there it. she. Sorry, things are falling there off. There she is. Oh, there amazing. we go. There's it's good the there. It's good. I don't know. My oh, things are lady falling lamp. off now. I'm going to lose my microphone. But, uh, you know, you did it. Oh, great. I yeah. did it. You're back. Please back. Saw it. <laughs> That's it. We did. We, we saw. We did everything. Yeah. And people really want to get a good picture. They can go on Instagram and take a look at the... Take a look yeah, at the, the, real. the lovely mm-hmm. lady real. lamp. We actually did all of our comments. Ooh, That's a first for us. But maybe Very efficient. Four of us today. True. Only four of us today. No. Uh, I'd sure. still like to take it as a win, though. Yeah. Let's yeah. <laughs> Let us. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Book Interrupted. If you'd like to see the video highlights from this episode, please go to our YouTube channel, Book Interrupted. You can also find our videos on www.bookinterrupted.com. Have a listen to our off-the-shelf episodes. These are the silly, fun, and weird, wonderful things we do when we get off cue. So, I think you'll love it, and I know you'll laugh. Moments you can look forward to on next week's Book Interrupted. On our show, we often go in directions that that show <laughs> no was No one could have a- predicted <laughs> You know, they're like, what if I'm at school and it just like sprays out of my pants? I was like, have you ever seen that happen before? (laughs) I love how we've come up with so many entrepreneurial (laughs) ideas. And then they like just give that podcast out to people they want to date and be like, see if you like me. (laughs) I want that shirt for our swag shot, Sarah, FYI. (laughs) On the rag. Yeah. And I'll wear it when I'm not on the rag too. Mysterious. It would be great if I wore my hammer (laughs) pants. (laughs) <laughs> remember those <laughs> and do a tiktok of doing the hammer dance whoa sarah loves obviously the dance. yes <laughs> <laughs> any excuse for the hammer dance book interrupted never forget every child matters